Hi, Ruronis. This is your pal Ruroni K95 here. So, if you ever watch anime in the 80s, such as Fist of the North Star or Yurusai Yatsura, there are some odds and ends of anime that came out in the 80s. We all know, such as Beast King Go Lion, Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Ranma One Half, Maison Akaku, Kamagurai Orange Road, oh, Dirty Pear. Golgo 13, The Professional, and the first six of the Yurisa, first five of the Yurisai Yatsura movies, like Yurisai Yatsura Only You, Yurisai Yatsura Beautiful Dreamer, Yurisai Yatsura Lum the Forever, Yurisai Yatsura Remember My Love, and the fifth Yurisai Yatsura movie that came out in 1988, such as Yurisai Yatsura The Final Chapter. <coughs> Oh, and Fist of the North Star, 1986 anime movie, Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, and Robotech the movie, and Transformers the movie. So today we're going to be reviewing Outlanders. So Outlanders started off with Princess Calm killing all the soldiers in the city. Because, you know, she's a scantily clad alien princess. I'm looking at you, Starfire. Princess Calm uses the sword. So Princess Calm kills the sword. A photographer named Tetsuya takes pictures of the chaos, and then she's about what is on her enemy line. But instead, he pin he grabs her and her uh, it's by the to the wall part, and then she she gave him, and then Princess Calm gave. Tetsuya a kiss, which is a similarity to Yurisai Yatsura. Funny little world we all live in, hasn't it? So Princess Khan was with Te Tetsuya at, at her spaceship after left Earth, and he thinks that she's invading her, but she just chose to be in love with him, which is a lot, a lot more different than Romeiko Takahashi's classic Yurisai Yatsura, you know, like Game Tag, and which had spread butter that we that someday I will review Yurisai Yatsura, which is in the beginning on episode one. Back to Outland. So, anyways, how in Outlanders, however, she took a like a some sort of hot bath when she's bathing her hair, and I go. Definitely not for kids, because it's probably recommended for mature audiences. And then... What if... And then Princess Calm is wearing a towel, because her towel is basically yellow in that one. And of course, the Jap in the Japanese dub, is she is she is voiced by Fumi Hirano, who did the voice of Princess Calm, who later also did the voice as Lum, Lum Invader from Yurisai Yatsura. Especially Outlanders. So for Outlanders, however, when she said to Tetsuya, if she hurt, if he hurts her by depending on like beating her, abusing her, she will hate him. If she, if he abuses her, hurts Princess Calm. So basically, he had she had a sword fight with another one woman named Batia or whatever her name depending on which character. So Tetsuya was nervously bumping into Princess Kong and her towel falls off. You see her tits. I was like, definitely not for kiddies. Until the red alert thing about some protagonist, no, no some, and, and another secondary protagonist was a Chewbacca-like character named... I forgot. The one was in, in the Japanese version, he is voiced by Kenji Utsumi, who did the voice for Rao in the Fist of the North Star anime. It's like watching Fist of the North Star, duking it out into Yurisai Yatsura. Am I right? Anime Bennett, the, 
the sage from Anime Abandoned. Speaking of which, in Outlanders, Tetsuya is with Princess Kam in bed. They're both naked, I saw. I go, ooh, definitely not, because they're romantic passionates. I saw some red alert coming on. And then, tragedy thing. Because some dumbass villain named Progress, they inst The funny part was, whenever they call him Progress, he just says it's Progress. Because Progress is some dumbass villain who is tall, dark, and stupid. That's why. Stupid things about pro Progress, isn't it? We get to see the scene where Princess Kam wants meets her uh, psychotic, mo like motherfucking emperor, which is her f so-called father, saying she wanted to meet marry Tetsuya because he's a human, and then he got pissed off, like he's going ham over it because nobody gave him a Snickers because. And then they had to arrest, put Tetsuya in some sort of prison, whatever that is. And Tetsu, and then she told her father to leave Tetsuya alone. But then he got pissed, and Progress said, "Apologize to the emperor." And then they take Princess Kam away to like some prison thing where they tied her up in those arms, like right there, you know, there. And then they disguised as. Progress's army, which is Batia and Geobaldi, this Chewbacca-like character in Outlanders, had to save Tetsuya, because one of Progress's men, henchmen, which are so-called soldiers, fall into the some weird teeth-like alien Sharktacon-like creatures, and then they had to rescue Princess Kong. And then one of Progress's men think that that Princess Kama is kidnapped, but she wasn't kidnapped because she says she's falling in love with Tetsuya. It's played out in the protagonist's the first melodrama since the first episode of Yurisai Yatsura in 1981. So after they rescue Princess Kam, they knocked out Progress's dumbass soldier on that bike thing, and then they used that bike on air ones as a getaway, and they were saying they were going to rescue Princess Kong, but Princess Kong killed Progress's ar and Emperor's army, because, you know, Progress is some dumbass villain, that's why. Because, you know why? And then they get to the spaceship so they can get away faster away from progress and her and the so-called emperor because the emperor is basically is referred to as a so-called father because the emperor is just some dumbass old man in Outlanders which nobody gave him a Snickers to calm him down with his anger issues and shit like that. Because nobody gave him a Snickers. Especially the Emperor and Outlanders. Funny little world we all live in, isn't it? So speaking of which, Jill Baldi has his army to shoot down Progress's army and to defeat Progress and Progress's army in the explosion. Because that is a, that scene is basically... Is right out of Star Wars or the modern science fiction anime, unlike the Star Wars prequels or the 1977 George Lucas one with Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill. Based so basically, it's right out of the defeating the Death Star because the Emperor is so is like a so-called Father wannabe or the modern Darth, the modern Darth Vader, 
Because, you know, I reference Star Wars. That's why. Am I right, George Lucas? That's what I'm going to say. So, speaking of which, this anime has its kind. This movie had it all had it coming. Because it's based on a manga that has ran through Dark Horse manga for like eight volumes. But unlike the manga, the, this an o anime OVA Outlanders is becoming the, the best in the 80s. And that's how you end the, the, the battle with Progress and his army's ship blown up into smithereens like the Death Star, what you see in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Am I right? Am I right where I mentioned Star Wars River White? So after the the bishop and one of pro, let the last of progress has been said, that they can't they, they destroyed Princess the Progress's ship because Progress died in smithereens, and they said the Princess Kam cannot marry Tetsuya, but the Emperor told them, "Let them be," as in, do whatever you want. Because the Emperor must have been wrong, so he said, Let them be. So we get to see Batia and um, Giobaldi getting drunk while having passionate love. Bestiality much. We get to, then we get back to see Princess Calm with Tetsuya basically made love before the credits roll, basically because they were, they're now basically fallen in love. So basically, Tetsuya and Princess Kam made anal love. And then that's how the mo the anime finishes off with the theme song, Starry Eyes, with 80s heavy metal guitar. If you tune in for another anime review, because I have finally reviewed Outlanders. Because because it's behind for mangas with science fiction vibe, 80s anime influence style in the 80s, like a Yurisai Yatsura type romance to comedy type in, with science fiction altogether. With... The ending sequence where they blow up Progress and his army's ship all into smithereens because Princess Com's team won, because well, right along with Batia and Giobaldi, has a good old reference to for science fiction films because it's right out of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, and that makes you wonder. Maybe Outlanders can be of all of these things. That's it going to be it for my anime review on Outlanders, you guys. So thanks for watching. Here's a little quick summary. We got a main character who's a photographer, took a picture of the chaos, uh, which is Tetsuya, because he took pictures of Princess Kam killing the soldiers. We got Princess Kam, who wants to fall in love with Tetsuya. Good job with making love with Tetsuya, Princess Kam. Good job. We got Bachi, yeah, who was like, an 80s anime ver character version of Horo from Spice and Wolf. But Spice and Wolf came out after, in the early 2000s. We got Giobaldi, who is like a Chewbacca type character who likes to insult progress by calling him progress. We got the Emperor, who is an old grout, who is old and grump, grouchy which nobody gave them Snickers in the first melodrama since Darth Vader. Her choke. Her first appearance in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. We got Progress, who is like Darth Sidious, trapped in an old man's body. Dies in the explosion, like in reference to Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. So hope you like to comment, rate, subscribe, favorite. Subscribe for content. Be sure to share this video on your Twitter. You can share this video on your Facebook with your friends on Facebook. And that's it. So like, subscribe, favor, comment, read the notifications. 
Be sure to check in my YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to RuRoniK95. And that's it. So keep it otaku for setting up my anime collection, closer at anime DVD series, and my anime reviews. And that's it.